Hey everybody, welcome to Lex's Lounge. How's it going? Welcome to my new filming and sitting lounge space, which I haven't decorated yet. Uh, but I did want to sit down and use it to film an actual video because I did have some interesting content for you. Today I'm going to be uh, summarizing this entire book in just a few minutes into easy to follow type of life tips. And the book is Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To by Dr. David Sinclair. And I will link down to this book in the video description if you want to pick up your own copy. But most people might pick up a copy of this book and think that this is going to be a practical guide uh, to increasing your longevity. And it is, in fact, anything but. Uh, if you want to know who David Sinclair is and you haven't watched any of my videos on him before, basically, he's a geneticist, he's a Harvard professor, and he is the leading expert in the field of longevity probably in the world. Uh, he is basically an expert in methods that allow you to live longer and stay healthier while you're living because it doesn't mean a whole lot if you live to age 110, but you're extremely feeble and unhealthy for the last 25 years of that. But in any case, I got his book and I thought that it was going to be simple, but when I opened it up, I realized that this is in fact a deep dive into molecular biology, genetics, and all sorts of obscure scientific concepts. Uh, Dr. David Sinclair does try to provide various diagrams, uh, trying to help explain how certain cells and DNA works to help you along, but this is still a very, very technical read, and most people just want the practical life advice. In fact, to make sure that I'm giving you guys the correct practical life advice, I recruited the help of my wife, Natalie. Hi, Nat. Hello. Can I help you? See, Natalie has an actual medical degree and a terrific mind for science, so I knew that if she read this thing and helped me out with it, that I would actually not misinterpret anything. So a big thanks to her for that. So on that note, guys, let us go over a bunch of simple, straightforward life tips uh, that are recommended by David Sinclair in his book. And again, I'm going to try and stay away from explanations and background and stick just to the tips, starting with the category of diet. The first thing you want to do when it comes to your diet is you want to be eating less meat. In particular, beef, because beef is the most unhealthy of the meats. And if you do want to eat meat more often, please try to make it fish as much as you possibly can, because of the different meats, fish is by far the healthiest. You also want to be eating as many veggies as you possibly can and as much whole grain food as you possibly can. And yes, some of this is going to sound like the kind of information a nutritionist might give you. So obviously the next couple tips are sugar, reduce your intake of sugar as much as you can, bread and pasta, reduce your intake of bread and pasta. You can eat them, but try not to eat too much. And of course, when it comes to uh, fresh foods versus processed foods, you want to get away from processed food as much as you can and eat more fresh food. So all of those type of tips are the types of things a nutritionist might say, but here's where David Sinclair adds his own little tidbit. He recommends microfasting. Now, microfasting is when you deprive your body of food for really short amounts of time, and that puts your body into sort of a stressed, uh, do I need food, do I need to conserve energy type of response, and sending your body into that response on occasion is very good for you. How do you microfast? Well, there's the way Dr. David Sinclair does it, where you put all of your eating into the same eight hours in a day, and don't eat for 16 hours. All you gotta really do is you uh, uh, don't eat breakfast and you have a late lunch and boom, the time you spend sleeping plus the first part of the day, there's your 16 hours of no eating and you can eat for the rest of the day. Another good way of microfasting, if that one doesn't really work out with your lifestyle, is eating normally for five days a week, but then for two days of the week, reducing your calorie intake uh, by 75% for the day. 
Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the first method of microfasting, since I often skip my breakfast anyway. That's it for diet, now for exercise. And when it comes to exercise, the good doctor recommends that you get cardio exercise and that your exercise be intense enough to actually generate a sweat. If you're not sweating, you're not exercising enough. What he recommends in the book are at least 75 minutes per week of intense exercise, meaning running or cycling, or if for whatever reason you can't do running or cycling, go for something else that generates a sweat that's a little bit less intense, like swimming, or uh, mowing the lawn and doing yard work, but do 150 minutes of that per week, not 75. The only other tip as far as exercise is watch your BMI, your body mass index, and make sure that you're kind of sort of within the recommended range. Here's a body mass index chart, so it's pretty easy to stay on top of that. Uh, just don't be obese is the short advice. Then the book goes into all sorts of uh, longevity pathways, and that's when you do stuff along the lines of microfasting to put your body under a small amount of stress to activate certain chemicals and compounds within your body that in fact increase your longevity. So a couple ways to do that is through temperature stress. So for example, if it's a cool day and you're gonna go for a walk, instead of throwing on a jacket, Walk in your t-shirt, let yourself get a little bit cold. It doesn't have to be a super long walk. You don't need to risk pneumonia. But as soon as you get a little bit cold, those pathways are activated. An alternate version of the cold thing, in case you're not a big fan of cold like me, is go into a sauna and spend some time in a sauna. You basically get the same type of effect, except with warm temperature rather than cold temperature. Then he talks about things in life that you really should avoid and stay away from as much as you can. So he gives certain examples of things that sort of do damage to your DNA. It's small amounts of damage, but it compounds over time. So stuff you should stay away from, smoking cigarettes, exposure to pesticides, exposure to x-rays and other scans unnecessarily, exposure to PCBs, to gas emissions, and there's also a lot of chemicals that you kind of have to avoid that are often found in food. But as long as you're following the advice of staying away from processed foods and moving more towards fresh foods, you're already sort of achieving that food chemical avoidance part of it. Another interesting tidbit in the book in this avoidance category is avoid microwaving things in plastic containers. This is advice somebody else gave me previously, but it was nice to see it reiterated in David Sinclair's book. Ideally, you want to be microwaving things in glass containers, not any kind of plastic. I'll try to link in the description to the exact glass containers that I use in my microwave. But in any case, that's the main life advice. And then he talks about the supplements that he himself takes. And again, he points out in the book that this is not anything FDA approved, and he's not even recommending that you take these supplements, not in any kind of official way. This is just what he does himself based on his decades of research in the field. And some of this stuff is in human trials as far as uh, developing actual longevity pills or formulas. But anyway, here's what he does. And if you've taken notes during some of his Joe Rogan interviews, you may be able to piece this out uh, anyway. All he does is he takes a thousand milligrams or one gram of NMN. That's nicotinamide mononucleotide. Or alternatively, if that compound is a bit too expensive for you, you could also take a thousand milligrams of NR instead. And R stands for nicotinamide riboside. And again, you've got to take one or the other, not both. Now, with, with whichever one of those you take, you should also take a thousand milligrams or one gram of resveratrol. That's a fairly easy compound to find. It's purchasable pretty much everywhere. And you should take both resveratrol and your NMN or NR together. And even more ideally, mix them in something fatty. So what Dr. David Sinclair does is he'll take those compounds and he'll mix them into his yogurt and he'll eat 
eat the yogurt. Simple enough. And the final thing he does is he takes a daily adult dose of vitamins D and K2, which is a vitamin combination that you can easily find pretty much everywhere. And that's it, guys. That's everything in the book broken down into only the simple life advice and ignoring all of the complicated scientific concepts. Though, if those do interest you, this is a very solid and, of course, incredibly useful novel. On that note, if this was useful, make sure you're subscribed and hit that like button. And we'll see you all next time.